Welcome to Live Doc, your online Doc Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome. Today's Daf Yomi is Shkolem Yud. We are right on top on the first line of the Gemara. Well, let's refer back to the Mishnah for a moment. We discussed the Mincha Sa'ima brought on the seventh year. On Shemitah, where we don't really have much, much supply to provide for the Aymer. The Mishnah tells us we use Sfichem after growth. We find some uh, randomly growing stalks of of uh, barley, and we reserve it for the carbon by placing some shemrim, some guards near that produce. We pay them. This way, they um, they are watching it for our sake, and it's considered our produce. It belongs to the tzibur. And this way, they can bring the minchas oimer. Rabbi Yeshi says, you know what? They can actually volunteer their services. Watch it for free. Shemer chinam. The Chacham responded, oh, we have a concern with that. If they're doing it for free, then they're really going to be zoiche in that hefker, and then when they give it to us, it's their own private supply. And you know that you can't use private supply for a public carbon. Rabbi Yassi apparently is not concerned. Then Rafashim explained, according to Rabbi Yassi, well, they'll hand it over to us completely, wholeheartedly, granted to the tzibur, in which case it's considered a carbon tzibur. That was the discussion at the end of the Mishnah. Begins the Gemara, Ma ra zman atzei kohanim ve'om lihimonis. This is a discussion in Masechus Tanis. We have a list of various days on which there were some donations. What type of donations? Firewood donations to the Beis HaMidosh. There was zmanim where certain families would regularly donate firewood to the base of Middash. And that was considered their, their Yom Tif. Mishnah gives us a full list of Zman Atzei Kohanim Va'am, the time where the Kohanim and the Am would donate firewood for the Karbanis. What's the point of mentioning those days? What's so special about those days? Ma Ro'o Zman Atzei Kohanim Va'am Li Manis. What's the big deal to give wood to the base of Middash? Anybody Anybody, if he chooses to be menadev eitzim, to donate firewood, to donate uh, eitzim, the Gemara speaks later about uh, a person, instead of giving a carbon, so he donates some wood, which is actually put on the mezbech as a carbon. So what's the big deal? Why did we specifically mention those days? Explains the Gemara, there is special significance to those days. El she'olu yisro When Yisro arrived from Gullus, and they were very poor, Firewood was short in supply. They didn't find firewood in the firewood chamber in the base of Elu. And these families stepped forward. They donated their own personal wood to the base of They handed it over to the Tzibur. And they used that firewood for the sake of Karbon Tzibur. Chacham said, well, since you came through in the clutch in time of need, you're going to have priority all throughout the Doris. should be named the Nevim amongst Yisrael, Chagai, Zechariah, Malachi, Ezra, and Nechemia, conditioned with them. They promised them like this. Shafil, Lishka, Malay, Eitzim, even the Lishka is filled with firewood. There's no need for your donations. You will still have priority. Even if we have enough ample supply, Va'amdu, Elev, and Esnad, Va'etzim, Mishal, Atzman, these families should decide to contribute their own wood. The carbon seabird will use their wood first. They get priority. So that's why we give a full list in Mesechah's Tanis of these special days which were considered days of Yom Tov celebration which they would mark throughout the Doris. Each family would celebrate on that day. It was like a yard site. That day was their special day on which they would donate Eitzim to the Migdash. What do we see? We see from here that a person could donate his own personal stuff to the Middash. And we can use it for carbon Sibur. Omar Rabbi Acha, apparently, who's the author of this sheet? The Rabbi Yosehi. This is sheet of Rabbi Yosehi in our Mishnah. The Rabbi Yosehi Omar, Afa Roitzeh, Misnat of Shemachinam. Getting back to the Svichel and Shviz, somebody should decide to do it voluntarily, that's okay. Because we assume that afterwards he will hand it over properly to the Sibur. Just as we see there. 
They would take their own personal wood and donate it for carbon seabor. Apparently, this is following his shita and his shita only. Whereas according to Rabbanon, there's always a concern that he won't really hand it over wholeheartedly. So just as by Svichim or Shvith, we have to pay them for their work. We don't want them to do it voluntarily because then they have ownership and perhaps they won't. They won't hand it over completely. They'll still want to retain some sort of ownership. They'll want that the carbon seabush should be considered theirs. We're always concerned about that, that they won't relinquish ownership completely. And likewise, in the case of firewood, apparently Rabbanu would not agree that any family could get up and donate their own personal supply. Rabbi Yaisi, B'Shem, Rabbi Ila, he said, no, Devri Akoyli. All agree firewood can be donated by these families. Why? Ma Pligin, when does the Machlikas apply? Begovishal carbon, only pertaining to the actual carbon. They supply for the Oymer or a Behema. Avil B'Machshir, carbon, but when it's something which is only a preparatory element of the carbon. It's a hachana. It's an accessory for the carbon. For instance, firewood. They are all agree, call al amma moidi, all agree, shumishtane carbon yachad carbon tzibur. You can go transfer from a yachad to tzibur. And we have two reasons explained in the Mepharshim. Firstly, because only when it comes to the actual carbon, other chacham concerned, perhaps he'll still want to retain some sort of personal identity, personal ownership here. He won't actually give it up completely. But when it comes to a Accessory, we're not so concerned, and therefore when it comes to wood, for instance, we assume he gives it over wholeheartedly, it's completely given to the to the tzibur. Another pshat is that a machshir carbon is not ma'akiv, if it's uh, not publicly owned, it doesn't disqualify the akrova, and therefore the chacham, we're not concerned about the trance, or perhaps it wasn't given over properly, because at worst case, even if it's privately owned, it doesn't disqualify the akrova. So bottom line, according to this approach, even the Rabban who disagree by Svich Shvius, and they say you must pay for it. You can't just take it from the from the donors. That's only because it's an actual carbon. But when it comes to firewood, machshir carbon, we more lenient. We allow even privately offer donations to be given over to the tzibur. Tani, we're going to have the same conversation over again. Tani, we learned in the Brisa. Isha she'asu sakusenis lubna. A kain had a good-hearted mother. She produced a shirt for him for Avoida and the Besamidosh, Ksher, he can use it, as long as she hands it over to the Tzibor, so the big day kahuna that he's going to wear are technically owned by the Tzibor. Amar Acha, Rabbi Yaisi, apparently this Brisa is following Shittas Rabbi Yaisi, and only Rabbi Yaisi, not the Rabbana, only Rabbi Yaisi, the Rabbi Yaisi Eimer, as we find Rabbi Yaisi in our Mishnah, Afa writes in Mesnad of Shemechinam, one can volunteer his services, and guard the Svich Shviz because he will give it over wholeheartedly. Same thing here. We assume she'll hand over this shirt wholeheartedly to the Beis Hamidosh. But according to Rabbanon, there's always a concern that she might hold on to the uh, ownership of this, of this, of this shirt. Response to Gemara, Rabbi Yaisi, B'Shem Rabbi Ila. He said, no, David HaKoyli. All agree in this case, it's okay. Even the Rabbanon will be okay with this shirt. Ma pligin, because the machlegus only applies because of the carbon. With regard to the actual carbon, then the chacham are concerned. Avil machshir carbon, with something that's just a, a machshir accessory for a carbon, such as a big lekuna, kol amamoidi, ol agrishu, mishtane, carbon yachl lekom et tzibur, that we assume that it changed hands from a yachat to a tzibur, there's no concern here, as we just explained in the previous kumar. Continues the kumar, masnisen, and there's a girsa, masnisen, messiah, rabbi yasi. We have a a b'risa which supports Rabbi Yaisi. What did Rabbi Yaisi just tell us? Rabbi Yaisi, the Amoyer that is. He just told us that even the Rabbana would agree when it comes to uh, things like firewood, which only machshir the carbon. We're pretty confident that it was given over completely to the Mizbeach. Completely to the Tzibur. We have a b'risa which supports it. The b'risa is again referring to those special days on which they would mark, they would celebrate as, as days of Yom Tov because that was... Those were days were designated for their personal contributions of fire to base amigdash. In those days, no yahagin. They were relevant. They were observed with shas carbon. During the time of carbon, meaning when the base amigdash was still standing, and even after the base amigdash was destroyed, those days are still relevant and observed. Rabbi Yassi, oh, no, ain't no yahagin, el bishas carbon malvad. Those days were only kept during the time of carbon base amigdash. 
So what's the right from here? You see the right button hold that those Yom Yom Tovim were still intact, were still in place after the Churban. Now, let's think for a second. If we're speaking about a person just handing over some wood as, as a carbon, as a private donation, as a carbon, as we're going to see by Hashem later on the Masech, you can do that. You can give an animal, you can give a wood, which is more than a Yeah, then on that day, you personally will have a Yom Tif. We discussed this in Masech Psachim. The day that a person brings a carbon is for him a Yom Tif. It's a day off. day of celebration. But that only applies when he's actually donating. <laughs> During the time of the carbon, when the basement is just standing. The fact that the Bryce, or at least the Shittas Rabban and the Bryce here maintain that those Zman Atsei Kohanim Ba'am, those special days, firewood donation days, were relevant even after the Beis Hamidash was no longer standing. Apparently, we're speaking about unique, unique contributions. Days in which those families would give over firewood for the Tzibur's use. Those were really significant events. Those were celebrated as Yom Yom Tovim and lasted even beyond the Beis Hamidosh. So we have a raya that apparently that was the practice in the Beis Hamidosh time. The families would actually donate this fire with supply for the Kabbalah Sibur. Apparently there's no concern with, with handing over your own personal fire to the Sibur for Sibur use. And even the Rabbanon agreed that in this case there's no worry because it's just machshiri carbon, and we assume we gave it over over completely. Another ayah of oid min from the following brayso, where we see that it was actually a masa. We see that there was a story related which proves the point. You see, halacha highlights the a story highlights the halacha more than just relating the halacha. We see that it was actually carried out practically a masa rav. That what? That those Yom Yom were still observed even after the Beis Hamidish was destroyed. So you see that those days had special significance. Those were the days where those families would contribute to the carbon Tzibur by way of their firewood. The Sanyi Omer Belezer Rabbi Tzaddik Anu Anu Hayinu Ibn Sana Ben Binyamin We were part of that family Sana Ben Binyamin family which contributed with the base of on which day? On the tenth day of Av. That was their designated day. And what happened? The Chol Tishabav leaves for Shabbos. The fast day of Tishabav that you happen to fall out on Shabbos. The Dachinu Eisel Matzei Shabbos. And we postponed Tishabav to Sunday, which actually was the day of our Yom Tiv, tenth day of Av. So what do we do? That's sort of a conflict here between our Yom Tiv and Tishabav, which is a fast day. Now apparently we're speaking after base was destroyed. Why else would you fast on Tisha B'Av? So he's describing something that took place after the Beis Hamidrash was already, was no longer standing. And he says, we solved it as follows. We fasted, but we didn't complete the fasting. So it's sort of a compromise we struck. We observed Tisha B'Av as a fast day, but we also didn't complete the fast. By doing so, we we uh, observed also our Yom Tif. And uh, by the way, this is a mucker. For the halacha that we actually practice today, uh, if a bris falls out on Tisha B'av, which is a nitcha to Sunday, then the Baal bris, the mal, the halacha is regarding shortening their fast. Because when it's also a Yom Tif, we're not marshaling the fast. In any case, we have a right from here that those special days, those days of celebration, those Zman Eitzim, carried on even after the Beis Hamidrash was destroyed. Apparently, it was a day of special significance a day in which the Tzibur benefited from the contributors of the Eitzim, we see from here that when it comes to Eitzim, there's no concern about handing it over completely to the Tzibur. Even the Rabban agree in this case, we have no fear, we allow them to contribute. So let's just summarize this segment of the Gemara regarding giving over your personal carbon to the Tzibur. Rabbi Yisrael says, we're not concerned that he's going to hold on to it. We assume he's going to give it over Yafa Yafa, as the Gemara in Baba Metziah says, Yafa Yafa. Whereas the Rabbanon say, don't take chances. We can't allow a private person to donate for the carbon seed. When we speak about Machshiri carbon, however, then according to the Gemara here, there's no concern. Even the Rabbanon would agree. We assume he gives it over wholeheartedly. We have two examples. 
firewood, and the big day corn. Continues the Gemara after the parenthesis, Taman Tanin. We learned in a Mishnah in Menachas. Kol Kabbonis Hayachel Atzibu, all private and public Kabbonis, Boi Mena Oretz Mena Chutzlaretz. It can be supplied using produce from Eretz Yisrael, or from out of Eretz Yisrael, whether we're speaking about grains from Menachas, whether we're speaking about animals, it's okay. Mena Chadash, Mena Yashin, you can use fresh produce this year's crop, or last year's crop. We have no limitations. Except chutz min ha'oymer v'shteyalechem. Except for these two, the oymer brought on the sixteenth of Nisan. Shteyalechem brought on Shavuos. Shein boin el menachadosh. They can only be brought from the new crop. By oymer it says mincha chadosh. Chadosh has to be something new. Umin aretz from Eretz Yisrael. This is the sheet of Rabbi Shmuel. There's another sheet there. Who disagrees. It says you can brought even from chutzlarz. But this this mission reflects Rabbi Shmuel, who holds. That the Omer must be supplied from Eretz Yisrael. Rabbi Chuna, B'Shem Rabbi Yirmiya, said the Rabbi Shmuel. Apparently, this Mishnah reflects Rabbi Shmuel. The Rabbi Shmuel Omer ain't no Omer, but min Asuria. You can't supply the Omer barley from something which was grown outside Eretz Yisrael, for instance, Syria, which is today's Syria, and certainly not beyond Syria. The Chiddush is even Syria, which was annexed to Eretz Yisrael, does not qualify as a supplier for the Omer. And certainly from outside of Surya, from Chutzlat proper, would not qualify. Taman Tanin, we learned in the Mishnah in Kale, Esser Kedusha saying, to attend levels of Kedusha pertaining to lands, Eretz Yisrael, Mokadesh, and Mokal Eretz Yisrael is more Kadesh than all other lands. Umayya Kedusha, so in what way does its Kedusha manifest itself? How does it express itself? Shemavin, Mimena, Ha'imer, Vabikur, Mishtelech. From its stroll, and only from its stroll, you can bring the Omer, Bikur, and Meshtelech. Masha'in Mavin, Kain, Mishp, Kalarotzois, things which cannot be brought from other lands. Who is this Shita? Once again, says the Gemara, Rabchia, Bashim, Rabbi Yermia, Dabi Shmoili. This apparently is Rabbi Shmoil, Dabi Shmoil Omar, Eina Omer, Bamina Surya. Omer cannot be brought from anywhere outside its stroll. Taman Tanin, we have a mission elsewhere in Shviz. Rabbi Shmoil Omer. The Pasuk here says, Bechorish. Uba Kotzer Tishpas and Shabbos, you must rest, must refrain from plowing and from harvesting. The fact that the Pasik joins these two things together, says the Rishmo, we have a drush. What type of cutting is Asar and Shabbos? Only something which is arbitrary, which is a non mitzvah activity. But if it's a mitzvah, you can do it even on Shabbos. Ma Chorish Rishus, just as Chorish plowing is Rishus, it's arbitrary, it's not a mitzvah. Meaning, there's no mitzvah to plow in order to produce oimer material. To plow on Shabbos is certainly not allowed in that case. Because if you have produce for your oimer, you don't have to go plow the shema for the sake of the uh, plant, plow and plant for the sake of the oimer. So charish is a non mitzvah. Af katzer rishus. Likewise, when the pasuk says you can't do katzer, we're speaking about rishus, a non mitzvah katzer. Yotzak tiro oimer show mitzvah, as opposed to cutting for the oimer. That's a mitzvah. It's an absolute mitzvah. It's a requirement for today. You must do it on the sixteenth of Nisan. Therefore, even if it falls on a Shabbos, you do it anyways. So Bishmol learns the drasha like this: the fact that the pasuk mentions two examples, chorish and katzer, next to each other. The drasha is. The what type of katzer is also to be done on Shabbos? Only if it's a non-mitzvah harvesting. But if it's a mitzvah, such as for the oimer, then it's allowed because the only thing that's also is something which is similar to charish. There's no mitzvah to plow for the oimer. So charish is considered rishus, and therefore it's also. Likewise, a katzer which happens to be rishus is also. But if it should happen to be a katzer for the sake of oimer, that's not even on Shabbos. That's a rishmal shit. Says the Rishmol Kedatei. Rishmol apparently is in line with his opinion elsewhere. The Rishmol of the Amar, Ein HaOimer Bamin Asuria. Rishmol tells us that Oimer cannot be brought from outside of Israel. Therefore, if it's the seventh year, we have to cut the Oimer in Eretz Israel, even though it's Shemitah. Even though you're not allowed to. On Shemitah, you can't just harvest the way you regularly harvest. So apparently the mitzvah of Oimer overrides Shemitah 
Kedaitei. This is in line with his opinion, as we just said. The Omar Yotzok Ksiru Omer Shu Mitzvah. Cutting for the Omer is Motan Shabbos because it's a mitzvah. Meaning, just as according to Rishma, cutting the Omer is such a great mitzvah that it overrides Shmita. It overrides Shabbos as well. Man Tana Shem Rishvichin B'Shvis Noitlun Scharim Tumas Alishka. Who, uh, whose sheet is reflected in the following halacha? That, we just learned now, Mishnah actually, that the guards, the ones that are safeguarding the svichen on Shemitah, those, um, those free-growing uh, stalks meant for the Eimer, those guarding the svichen get paid from the Trumas Alishka. Apparently, on Shemitah we cut Eretz Yisrael produce. The Ktsira Sa'ima overrides Isra Shmita. Mantan, Shamir Svichas Bishviz, Noitan Sharm Tom Salishka Bishmali. Apparently it's a Bishmal, once again, because of the Bishmal, Ktsira Sa'ima is a mitzvah which overrides Shmita Isr and Isr Shabbos. Or Rabbi Yisra, no, Divra Kaili. Not necessarily Isra Bishmal. Perhaps it's in line with all Shitas. Even the Shita that holds that you can bring. You can bring um, the Omer from outside Eretz Yisrael. I mean, the Gemara figures that this Mishnah, which indicates that you're going to cut the Omer material in Eretz Yisrael, is following the line of Rabbi Shmuel. He holds cutting as a mitzvah, and he holds also, let's keep in mind, he holds also that Omer can only be supplied from Eretz Yisrael produce. So that proves that our Mishnah is Rabbi Shmuel. So it's more no, not necessarily. Perhaps it's following even the Rabban who holds that Rabbi Yehuda that holds that Oymer can be brought from outside of Yisrael. So why are they cutting in Yisrael and Shemitah? Like Matzi Basuria, maybe in Oysa, in Misvich and Shemitah Yisrael. We're speaking about a year which was, which was a drought. They didn't find any supply outside of Yisrael. And therefore that necessitated cutting the Svich in Eretz Yisrael. Fine. Says Mahein Oymer, this Oymer, Mao Shi Zor Batchila. We just spoke that according to Rishmal, the Ktsir Sa Oymer overrides the Yisrael Shemitah. Suppose he sees there's not going to be any supply this year. Even Sfichan are unavailable. So for the sake of the Omer, can he actually plow? Can he actually uh, um, plant on Shemitah? Ha'hein Omer. Ma'o shi Yisra betchila? Can he go out and plant it l'chatchila? And override Isra Shemitah? Because it's going to be Shemal. You must bring the Omer for its role. Even on Shemitah. So as the Gemara Rab Chia Bar Ada, boy, he asked, "Kumi Rabbi Mana, from Rabbi Mana, how could he even suggest that you could plant on Shmita for the sake of the Omer?" Loy Nimtza ki koymetz ala shiraim she'ina nechalim, because what's going to happen is like this: the end product of this planting on Shmita is going to be also to be eaten by the koyim. Sure, you can use it as a carbon, take the koymetz, take the scoop. Put on the mezbeach, but the shirayim, the leftovers of that kometz, will be inedible because it was produced by a isra shmiz to asa b'achila. So how can you suggest they can bring the omer from this type of supply? The point of the kometz is also to be mata the shirayim. That's the way the mincha process works. If the kometz won't enable the shirayim to be eaten, then the climate is not a properly functioning climate and is also it, the, the government's puzzle. Amalehi responded, not necessarily. Nasa, we treat it, like those five carbonates, Shein Bon Betuma, we learned this in the Mishnah Psachim, when the Tzibar is tummy, they bring all types of carbonates to Tzibar. Although they brought Betuma, but they're not eating Betuma. So the fact that a tzibur is tummy that overrides the isra of akrov, you could bring it, but you can't eat it. Apparently, eating is not necessary. And here as well, even if you cannot eat the shirayim, the carbon would still be kosher. So the question was, could you plant? The response was, certainly not, because the shirayim would be also in that case. The response to that is, so what? It can still theoretically be a min and really we don't have no resolution on the shayla. Continues the Gemara. Kate the Oisa. The Mishnah tells us you pay the Shemri Svichan. Give them 
a salary for watching the stocks designated for Omer supply. How do you pay them? Kate said the voice said. Because you can't take Mois Hegdish and just give it to them. You have to transfer the Kedusha on something tangible, some item. The fact that you pay them for their effort, that doesn't affect a transfer of Kedusha. So what do you do? Noitel Mois Menashulchani. He takes some money from the, uh, the money changer, from the banker. He asks the banker to lend, to lay out some money for these fellows' wages. And he hands the money to the harvesters and the guards before the Omer is brought. That's the first step. Then later when the Hegdish actually receives delivery of the uh, of the Omer material, then he brings money from Tumas Alishka, and he transfers the Kedusha of the Mois Halishka onto this, onto this grain that arrived in the Beis Hamikdash. Something tangible, something in your hand. Now that grain becomes Kaddish, and the money loses its Kedusha and can be used to pay up the money that the banker laid out for Hagdish. Says, what of a king? Is this a proper approach? What's the problem? You see, the Oymer. Work like this. You take a large amount of grain, you chop it up, you crush it, you grind it, and you sift it very well. The end product is very is a very small quantity, very small amount of, of barley. You start off with a huge amount, end up with a very small amount, which actually ends up being used for the carbon. Now suppose these guards were entitled to hundred dollars for their effort, because they were guarding this big field. And that's what the banker laid out for them. At the end of the day, when Hegdish takes delivery of the end product, just a small amount, which is worth ten dollars. We're trying to take Trumas al Mishka money, according to the amount of money we owe the Shemer, which is a hundred dollars, and we machal that Kedusha on something which is only worth ten dollars. How does that work? But Tobas Cain, is this is this an approach? Says more, yeah. Rabbi Acha b'shem Rabbi Po. He answers like this: Kol mashiyitin. Whatever he ends up paying the laborers for their effort. Suppose in this case it's a hundred dollars. Hein hein damav misha rishona. This was predetermined to be considered the value of the end product. So they sort of inflated the, the price of the of the end product. Initially, this was the mindset. We're going to treat the value. We're going to give value to the end product in accordance with the money that we owe the Shem. So in our mind, the end product is worth $100. Because really, all that effort went into producing that product. Therefore, it's justified to do so. To take $100, be machal on this small amount of flour, even though technically it's only worth 10 but to us it's worth 100 We transfer the conclusion of $100 to this flour. Now we have money which is no longer hegdish, and we hand that back to the banker on account of the wages for the workers. Continues Gemara basically repeating the same discussion. Tana, af refasoche avonim kin. We do the same system when it comes to the stone cutters, the ones that would hew the stones out of the quarries. Same question applies there. How can we take mummin of hegdish and just hand it to the workers without anything tangible in return. Kate said, so what do we do? Noitel Mois Meshulchani, Venoisein, we take money from the Shulchani, and we hand it to the Lachoitzvin, to the, to the, um, the, the uh, stone ewers, Velasatatin, and to the stone cutters, Achelot and Nosen al Gabadimus, before they even put it on the, on the wall, on the row, before they build it into the base of Middash. So first we we'll lay out their wages. Once it arrives onto the wall, maybe Mois from Tumasalishka. Now we have something tangible in our hands. We take money from Tumasalishka, Umchal Aleo, and we transfer the Kedusha onto that onto that brick, and we hand the money back to the bank. But how could he do that? The same question applies here. Because the wages exceed the value of the stone. Rabbi Yeshi Rabbi Bon, Bishem Rabbi Shmuel. The same answer as before. Komashayitim, whatever he's going to hand over as wages. Heining Domeo, that's considered the value of the stone, Mishari Shoina. Initially, this was the mindset. 
So let's summarize the last piece of Gemara. We brought Rabbi Shmuel's Shita that the Oymer Shtei Alechem can only be brought from Eretz Yisrael. Rabbi Shmuel tells us the Ktsir is the Oymer. It's the Shabbos. It's the Shemitah. And we had a question whether you can actually plant on Shvius if needed. We left it unresolved. And we discussed how they are Mechala the Kedusha for the sake of paying wages. It says the Mishnah Para Vesor Mishtaleach we learned earlier that the Truma Salushka was meant for Karbanas Tzibur. That was the designation of the money withdrawn from the Lushka, the chamber which housed all those coins. In this Mishnah we're going to have a, another short list of additional items which are very closely related to Karb, types of Karbanas, which also are funded with Truma Salushka. Para, the Paraduma, Vesar Mishtalech, the goat that was sent out, La Azazel, out to the Midbar, thrown down the mountain on Yom Kippur, Velosh and Shalzahiris, and this uh, thread or this wad of uh, combed red wool, which was used in the Para Aduma process. All these items, born with Trumas Alishka, are purchased using Trumas Alishka money, the Chiddush here is, even though the Paraduma is actually. Um, shechted outside the Vesem Midosh, and Sir Meshtalech certainly tended to outside the Vesem Midosh. They also are regarded like Karbonais, and you purchase it from the Trumas Alishka. Now we're going to have a list of items which are not funded through Trumas Alishka, rather through the Shiyare Alishka. Because after they withdrew money from the Lishka, there was lots of money remaining behind. That was called the Shirayim. That money had a lower status, it was downgraded to Shiyore Halishka, and it was used to supply other, fund other expenses which are Migdash related, as you're going to see. Kevesh Para, the double ramp they would construct, on which they would transport the Paraduma from the Isa Midlash to the Harazesim to avoid any contact with Tumma, the Kevesh Sarmish Talech, the ramp that they would build in order to transport the Sawyer, Hamishtaleach, and Yom Kippur, the Khmer Yuma says that the Bavlim would pull out his hair, the fellow who would take the Sawyer to the Midbar, would pull out his hair, hurry up, don't stay around, don't leave the Averis here. So in order to avoid <laughs> the aggressive Bavlim, they built a special ramp, so that he's safe in his own territory. The Loshan should be in Karnov, how would they fund the Loshan, this uh, red woolen material, Strung between the um, horns of the Sarmish Shaleach, the Amasamayim, and the stream running through the Azara, the Chaymas Irm de la the walls and the, the um, forts, the towers around Yushalayim, and the Chotzorche Ir, and all other municipal needs. All these things were funded from where? Boin, Mishir, Alishka, the leftover money, the Lishka. You see, even Yushalayim needs are Migdash carbon related somewhat. Because the carbonos are eaten throughout Yerushalayim, Kachim Kalam at least. Therefore, it made sense to use the Shir Alishka for the municipal needs of Yerushalayim. So it's interesting, Yerushalayim is like an international city. It was funded by Yisrael from all over the world. Abba Sholaymer, he takes one exception. Kevesh Pura that you mentioned, the one for the Pura Duma, Kehanim Gedolim Oisin Mishal Atzim. The Kehanim Gedolim would have constructed using their own funds. This way it was considered theirs and identified with them, so this was the Minik. Continues the Mishnah. We're going to have several other monies. We're going to have to figure out their, their designated use. They're going to be Moisaris, leftovers. Leftovers from what? Several types. We have the Tumas Halishka, and then we're going to have Moisar Tumas Halishka. Suppose, at the end of the day, they have some leftover in those buckets which were used for Trumas Halishka. They withdrew money in those buckets. But there's some money left over there. What do you do with that? It's called Moisa Truma. What do you do with Moisa Shiyar Halishka? After they tended to the needs of Yushalayim, there's some money left over in the Lishka. What do you do with that? It says the Mishnah, Moisa Shiyar Halishka, Maho Yu Oisem Bahem. Loichen Bahem Yenois, Shmona Muslases. You purchase with them wine, oil, flour, Vaschal Hedish. You engage in, in a business venture. You sell it to the Yisrael who need these things for the Karbanis. And the Prophet goes to Hegdash. So that's what you do with the Moiser Shiyor Elishka. Dib Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Kiva, I mean, no. Ein me'ashtakrim lo'im b'shal Hegdash. 
it's not appropriate to use Hegdish money for business ventures or pairs like Hegdish is short money. You don't do that. Likewise, you wouldn't do that with stock of money. The Gemara later speaks about a Svara that, you know, the investment might go sour. You don't want to take chances. You don't use Hegdish or Ani money for these purposes. So Rekiva negated this whole concept of a Rishmal. That's not what you meant to do with the Shiar Alishk. Continues the Mishnah. What about Maisar HaTruma? So you have these buckets in which you withdrew money from the Lishka, Trumas Alishka, which was meant for Kabanis, right? And you have money left over there now. You have a dilemma because you can't just use it for anything. This money was designated for carbon use. It, it acquired a higher status. It was, it was destined for something higher. So you have to be careful with its use. Moisar Atruma Meho Yoisimba. So according to Tanakama, this is what you do with it. Rikuye Zov. He purchased gold plates, Sipui the base Kodesh Kedoshim, which was used for the to plate the walls of the Kodesh Kedosh. That was a sheet of Tanakama, Moisa Truma, gold plates. Rabbi Shmuel Aimer, Moisa Raperis Ketam Esbeach. The prophet brought into the Migdash on account of that business venture that he discussed earlier. That's used to supply the Mizbeach with extra carbonous oil, Kaita Mizbeach, like a dessert. When the Mizbeach was sitting idle, they would add these carbonous, these carbonous oil, and it was purchased from these monies, profited by that business venture. Moisa Truma, leftovers in the Truma Salishka, going to be small, was meant Likli Shores, to purchase Likli Shores, the um, vessels used for the carbonous. So according to him, Klisharis are close enough to carbon, accessories to the carbon, they're serving the carbon, therefore it's appropriate to use the leftover funds from the Trumas Alishka for this purpose. Rabbi Kiva, Aymer, Moisar, see Rabbi Kiva and the upcoming Shita Rechanania both disagreed with Rabbi Shmuel's idea of buying and selling for profit in Beis Hamidosh. So according to them, there was no such a thing as Moisar Aperis, which we small alluded to, because there is no payers at all. There's, there's no profit profiteering from Mom and Hegush. The only thing we do have is Moisa Truma, left over in the Truma Salishka, and also something called Moisa Nesach. More later, we'll explain that many times there was some Nesach left over at the end of the year, some extra flour, etc. So what do you do with that? He holds the leftover Truma Salishka is used to purchase carbonates in the Mizbeach. Truma is for carbon, and therefore it's meant to be used for carbon. Moisa nesach on the clay shores. There's any leftover nesach, and that's converted into funds purchase, to purchase clay shores. Rabbi Hanani is going to call him Omer. He's going to switch things around. So it's just the opposite. We speak about two types of leftover monies. Moisa truma salishka, moisa nesachim. I say just the opposite. Moisa nesach on the kaita mezbech. The leftover nesachim goes for the carbonates. Because according to him, the two things are similar in nature. The Sachem is something completely brought on the Mizbeach. You pour the wine, everything goes on the Mizbeach with the any leftovers. Therefore, it's appropriate to be used for something similar. Kaita Mizbeach, which is completely burnt on the Mizbeach. Moisar Atrum, the Klei Shores. Leftover from the Mizbeach, that's used the Klei Shores to buy the Klei Shores, which are close enough to Karma. Zevazen, now, if you notice, Rabbi Kiva and Hanani both omitted any mention of payers. Profits coming in from that business venture. Zeva Zev, both of them, lo yo yo moidim payers. They disagreed with Rabbi Shmuel's suggestion to use the extra monies for bringing in profits. They didn't agree with that and therefore they didn't make any mention of that. The only thing they mentioned was Moisa Trumas Aleshka and Moisa Nesach. Before we continue, lest we get confused, let's just summarize the sheets. We have different types of monies. Trumas Aleshka, According to all shittas, the money withdrawn from the lishka was meant to be used for kabbalas tzibur. That's agreed upon by all. Any leftovers shiur lishka, that was meant for all types of sort of municipal needs, the ramps and the walls of the city. And again, agreed upon by all. The question is regarding moisores leftover monies. We have four categories: moisar trumas lishka, according to Tanakama, gold plates for the kodesh kedosh, according to Rishma, he purchased klishores. Went to Ketam Mizbeach because 
Truma Salishka was meant for Karbaris. Therefore, Ayla is the most appropriate thing to purchase. With that money, Kodim Chavania was used for clay shirts. Leftover Shiyare Halishka, meaning after Truma Salishka was taken, you have the Shiyare Halishka, the leftovers. You use it for municipal needs described earlier. There's some money left over. Rishmo made mention of that, and he says that's meant to purchase Paris, meaning wine and oil and flour to be used to profit the Hegdish as a business venture. The other uh, Tanaim did not make mention of the Shiore of the Moise Shior Alishka. What about Moise Nesachim? Which means at the end of the year you had some, some leftover Nesachim. What do you do with that? Rabbi Kiva and Rechanani both mentioned that. According to Rabbi Kiva, you use it to buy Klei Sharis. According to Rabbi Hanani, since Nesachim are completely on the Mizbeach, therefore it's appropriate to use them for Kaitzah Mizbeach, for Oilis in the Mizbeach. Regarding Moisa Paris, those profits brought in through that business venture, that's something only Rabbi Shmuel agrees with, he holds that is used to purchase the Kaitzah Mizbeach. Continues the Gemara Kevish Para, Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachman, Rabbi Shem Yenis, and said like this. We mentioned this, uh, red thread, this red wad of, of combed wool, we actually find three times in Torah that this type of thing was used. And each one had its own designation, its own size and weight, depending on its function. Gimel is showing the same. There are three different types. Shal Sayer, the one used for the Sarem Shaleach. The seller had to be large in size, had to weigh a seller. Why? Because Gemara and Yuma tells us they used to split into two parts. They used to hang on the Sawyer pot on a rock, and then it would turn white. So it needs to be considerably sized to allow for splitting and distribution. So that's the way of selling. Shal Mitzurah, the one used by the Mitzurah, that could be small and significantly sized. Be shekel, as long as it weighs a shekel, because it was simply used to be dipped into the blood and spritz with it. It didn't have to be large and sized. Shal Parabish, the one used for the Paraduma, had to be really heavy, way too sella, because that had to have weight to fall into the fire. Rabbi Chunya Divras Chavrin, Rabbi Chunya from Bras Chavrin said that Rabbi Ba Barzavda said in the name of B'Shem Rabbi Shem Machalavta Shal Parabish Teis Loim Mechza. They need to be two and a half slime in weight, which is actually ten zuz, because each cell is ten zuz. This the Mapkin and Lishka, and some had it in a different version, Masar Zuz. They said straight out ten zuz. It's really the same as two and a half cell, but uh, you know, the Gemara tells us that a person is meant to relate a halacha accurately the way his Rebbe said it. That's why they chose uh, to say Asar Zuz, which was the Loshan of the Rebbe. So you have three different types of walls and three different types of weights, depending on the use and designation. Now we're going to have a list of individuals who are on the Truma Salishka payroll. Rabbi the B'Shem Rabbi Shmuel, he said like this, Talmid the Chachamim, who were in Yisholayim, HaMalam din Esar Gehanim Milcha Shechit, who were engaged in instructing the Kehanim there, Halachis of Shechita, Halachis Kabbalah, Halachis Kabbalah, Harim Yom Kabbalah Adam, Halachis Zrika, to do the Zrika. So they gave instruction, they taught Torah to the Kehanim, Noit when Sechorim Tumar Salishka, they would get paid from the Salishka because they were serving the, the Karbamis. Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Radifa, B'Shem Rabbi Imi, he said, Mevakri Mumri Kachim, those individuals engaged in inspecting the Karbamis from blemishes, since they were also servicing the Karbamis, their wages would also come from the Tumar Salishka. Noitun Sharm, the Tumar Salishka. Rabbi Achar, Rabbi Tancham, Archia, B'Shem Rabbi said, Megiyah Sefer Azar, the ones that were engaged in editing the Sevatari and the Azara, which was used by the Karim God and Kippur. Here again, this fellow was on public payroll. Noitlin Scharam, Tumas Salishka, they would get their funding from Tumas Salishka. Another example is Gidel Bar Minyom and Shemar Asi, Shnei Dayan Exalis. In Yushalayim, there were two Dayanim involved in um, preventing thievery. They would make Xeris and Takanus to avoid Xela. And that also benefited the Beis Hamidlash so that you don't bring a karma which is not yours. Noitlin Scharam and Tumas Salishka. They will get paid from Tumas Salishka money. Now, Toysis and Ksuvis asks, well, uh, teaching Torah is not meant to earn a salary, meant to teach Torah for free. So he says this was their exclusive occupation and they were serving the community's needs. That's why they were rightfully paid through the public fund. Says the Gemara, what about the ones that would produce the Parechas? I was speaking about a unique curtain which was between the 
Heichel and Kodesh HaKadosh. Now we know during the first place of Mikdash, there was a wall there. But during the second place of Mikdash, there was some confusion as to the status of that space. The Chum were unsure whether the actual space where the wall used to stand was, was it considered part of the inside, part of the Kodesh HaKadosh, or part of the Heichel. They weren't sure. It was called the Amotraxin. It was wide in Amma. And it was, it straddled both sides. We weren't sure which area it belonged to. Therefore, they created a parechis, actually two parechis, two curtains, one on the side of that space. This way, this way it was right in the middle and it was uncommitted to either side. So it's interesting that this was merely a parechis, was a curtain, which is really trans, Transferable. It was. It was. Uh, it was transportable. It was really mobile. Something which was only temporary. It was like a cleat. But think of it. It came in, in the place of a binyan instead of a wall. So the question is, what status does it have? Is it like klisharis, or is it like a binyan? Is it part of the building? What's the difference? How do we fund it? Do we fund it like we fund the rest of the building from the bedek habayis, the maintenance fund? Because the parichas here is regarded like part of the building structure, or is it merely like a clay? And as we learned in the Mishnah, the clay shores are funded differently. So we have Shmuel Omar, no shema ergas v'parichas, the women who would weave the parichas, noitlin scharam v'trumas alishka, they would be funded through the trumas alishka. Rabbi Chuna Omar, no, v'trumas v'dekha bayis, from the building maintenance fund. My public, what's the base of the machlekes? Shmuel, Avad law, there's a gifts of Kikalim. He treated like a Kli, and therefore he held. It's funded using the Trumas um, Salishka money. Whereas Rav Huna, or Rav Huna, Avad law Kibinyan, he treated it like a building, like part of the structure, because it came in place of a building, and therefore it was funded through Beda Kabbalis. Amar Rabbi Cheske, Tana, we learned in the rise, Tana Rabbi Yehuda God Kedus, that was his name. Tana, he taught. What did he teach? He gave us a rundown of many items and taught us how to fund them. Haktoris, Uchol Kabarnes HaTzibur, Boin with Tumas Alishka, was funded through Tumas Alishka. Mizbeach Azov. So it's interesting, although it was Mizbeach, but it was portable, so it has them like a Kli. V'chol Kli Shores, Boin, Memois and Nesachem. How do we purchase that? Using the leftover of the Nesachim. He's in line with the Sheet of Rabbi Kivan al Mishnah. That Maitha Nesachim is meant for Klishos. Mizbeach HaOyla, which was something of permanence, was a structure. Vaechel, Vaazaris, Boin, and we have a gear on the side, Boin, Mi Bedek Habayis. That was funded through the Bedek Habayis fund because this was part of the structure. You use the building fund for that. Chutz things outside the Azores, for instance, the city walls, Boin Mishiyare, the gifts of Boin Mishiyare, Halishka. You funded that expense using the leftovers in the Lishka. As we mentioned now, Mishnah, that the, uh, for instance, the walls of Yishalayim were funded using the Shiyare Lishka. Says the Gemara, is that so? That the walls of Yerushalayim were funded in this manner. Vatani, we learned in the Brisa, Avne Yerushalayim. That's the gears on the side. The Vilnagorin's gears, Avne Yerushalayim. Ha'echel v'azores mo'yalben. If one should inappropriately benefit from these things, he chips off a rock. He does me'ila. Now let's think for a second. Me'ila is only if one benefits from something which has real kedusha, which has a higher level of kedusha. But leftover. Money in the Lishka, that wasn't any longer designated for Karbanis. There's no Me'ila there. The Chiyesh Me'ila be Shirayim? Does Me'ila apply to leftover money? And since the Shirayim were used to fund the walls of Yishalayim, there's no Me'ila involved. Says my Elk Rameyer. No, follow Rameyer Shita. Rameyer, Amar Ma'al Mishirayim. He holds that even the leftover monies in the Lishka, since they were designated as a backup, just in case you run out of true Masalishka funds, so they also have sort of a carbon designation to them, and there's Me'ila involved. So, according to Rameh, we understand this halacha. Yeshira Lishka has Me'ila. Therefore, since it was used to build the walls of Yishalayim, if one inappropriately benefits from the walls of Yishalayim, it does Me'ila. 
says the one, but that doesn't work. Why? Yeah, when did Rameya say there's me'ila to Shirayim? Because it's considered a backup fund for the Karbanois. If it's within this year, but here we're standing past year. It's a hundred years later. Meaning, Rameya says, even the Shirayim are meant to be used at worst case scenario when we run out of funds. You can use the Shirayim for the Karbanis. But think of it. Once the year is over, you can no longer use that money for this year's Karbanis. Because every year had a new supply. So once Nisan of the next year arrives, all agree, any leftover monies have no meal, they have no longer a carbon designation to them. So ten years later, the walls of Yishalayim should not have meal. We leave it as a kash. One more Gemara. Om Rab Chizkiya Tana Rab Yehuda Gad Gad Gedan Yais. So he told us as follows. When we bring a carbon to Beis Hamidosh, must all the kalim be in place? Are they ma'akev? Must everything be configured properly? Ha-shulchan v'amanoir v'amizbechas v'aparoiches ma'akev v'amizakarbanis divar meir kontra meir If none of, if one of these items are not in place are not around it disqualifies the carbon. You can't bring a carbon in that manner. Everything has to be intact in place. V'chacham v'amanoir no e'en l'cham ma'akev is a carbon the only thing that disqualifies a carbon is Ella and there's gears on the side karkov karkov v'ker these are different parts of the Mizbech, meaning the Mizbech has to be positioned in place, properly configured with all its elements. The corner, the, the ramp, everything has to be there. So only the Mizbech, which is the focal point of the Resamidosh, focal point of the carbon, has to be in place. Says the Gemara, V'loikein, Amr Belezer, Rabbi Yisra Chanina. We have two Amr Rabbi Belezer and Chanina, who seem to state otherwise. And their halacha, their shita seems to be inconsistent with the Rabbanim who only insist on the Mizbeach being in place. Why? What do we see that they disagree? Tarvei and Amin, because they both said, Kol hendichsev noichach ma'akev. Any kli on which the Torah, which the Torah refers to, Torah uses the term noichach, for instance, the menorah, it says, place the menorah, noichach ha ma'akev. That indicates Permanent. It's meant to be there. It belongs there. And if you don't have it, you can't bring a car. It's It's so only the menorah. Sela in a market. But we, the Torah used the word, the word sela like the shulchan. It says a shulchan titin el sela tzafin on the tough side. That's not so in, integrally connected to the English. It's not miak. That's their shita. Only the menorah. Vama Rabbi Shmuel Nachman b'shem Rabbi Yenison. I feel it's sela market. Even the shulchan is market. Vama Rabbi Ilu b'shem Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachman. I feel I feel a sima market. All those kalim, the arayin, the parechas, mizbech, where the Torah used the word sima, put it there, put it there. Put, it says vayasim, he put it there. Which indicates that it's connected. It's part and parcel. It's an integral part of the Beis Hamikdash configuration. It's ma'ak of the carbon. So either it's the menorah, or the menorah and the shulchan, or all these other kalim are ma'akiv. How does this work with the Rabbanon who just told us only Mizbech is Mak? Aram Chanina. It depends what we're speaking about. Kan Ba'avoides Shebefnim. The Karbanis, the Avoides, which took place inside, meaning in the Heichal Ked Shekadashim. Yeah, over there. All these Kelo Ma'akiv. Kan Ba'avoides Shebechutz. The Chachamim, who told us only the Mizbech is Mak, they were referring to the Avoides outside. Outside the Heichal and the Azor. Over there, all you need is Mizbech, which is the primary uh, feature of the of the external part of the Besamigdash and everything else is not Biak. Okay, let's make a quick hazard of today's da. Regarding Karbani Sibur, Chacham say, don't donate your own. We're concerned, you might not give it over completely. Rabbi Yisri says, there's no concern. He'll give it over wholeheartedly. That's when it comes to Karbanis. What about Machshiri Karban, things which are merely Accessories to a carbon firewood or the bit the kahuna, the Gemara concludes, according to all shites, rest assured he'll give it over wholeheartedly. We shmal told us that the Imer and Shtealechem only brought from Eretz Yisrael supply, and the Gemara tells us how to pay the wages for the workers. We take the money, we transfer the Kedusha on something tangible, and then pay back the bank. The Tumas Halishka money, all agree, was for Kabbalah Sibur. The money left behind the Lishka 
was used for all types of municipal needs. Leftover monies in the Truma Salishka itself, we have four sheetahs. Leftover in the Lishka, after you already used for all your needs, called the Mishmol, was used to purchase material to profit Hegish. Leftover in the Sacha, we have two sheetahs. According to Mishmol, the profit earned was used for Ketzal Mizbech. We discussed three different types of wool and threads and their respective weights, depending on their designation. We had a list of individuals who were paid by the Truma Salishka. We had a Machlekes regarding the Pareiches. Do we treat it like a Kli, like a Binyan? We learned that the Avoid and the Azur over there, according to Rabban, all you needed was the Mizbech intact. Regarding Avoid is with Nehem. Some say even the Menorah, some say the Shulchan as well, and some say all those Kalim were required to qualify for Akrovas Pnei. Kaltuv and Atzlacha Rabbah to you.